Good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Fellows. I am Oscar's Senior Manager for Digital Communications. And thank you very much for signing up and coming along to this webinar session on using Oscar Online. Uh, I, what we want to do in the next few minutes is to run through a number of issues in relation to our upgraded and brand new Oscar Online system. Before I do that, though, I'd like to introduce my colleagues who are joining me on this call. I'll be cheering today, but they are the real experts. So we have Laura Anderson, who and Laura is uh, one of our senior members of staff and has responsibility for uh, much of our casework operations and our annual returns. So Laura's here to uh, to give us some insight into the annual returns process itself. Hello, Laura. You there? Yep. I'm joined by Cameron Goodson Maguire, who is currently in the in my team, and will be actually next week. We'll be joining our data team again, uh, and has played a big part in the development of the new system. Cameron will be running through a demonstration of the new system after I finish my opening remarks. Cameron, say hello. Hi, everybody. Shy now. Yeah, thank uh, you. <laughs> and last but by no means least, I'm joined by Casey Duncan. Casey is a key member of our front desk team. So if you email Oscar or you phone Oscar, uh, Casey is one of the first people that you're able to talk to. So she's got a, a great understanding and knowledge of the inquiries that uh, charities and charity representatives are making just now. So Thank you for joining us, Casey. Hello to you too. Hello. Oh, yeah. So what we're going to cover in the next little while is a little bit about what Oscar Online is. We'll talk a little bit about annual returns, about how to do that one or doing that online. Why we've changed the way that this has worked. And then we're going to give you a, a demonstration, a live demo about how that works. At the end, we're going to give you a chance to ask any questions that you have. You can either do that by typing questions into the chat box just now, and I'll cover them um, at the end. Or um, if you put your, uh, put your hand up at the end, I will, I'll come around and we can ask in person, you can, you can see your question. If there are, we won't be covering the detail of uh, accountancy and reporting. Um, what we will do um, is we'll send around a, some links at the end of the, this session to everybody that's signed up with more information about all of these things too. But we've got a, a range of experts online, so if you've got a, a couple of questions at the end, you can do that. So Oscar Online is the system that charities and the representatives use to submit your online annual return and, which, and to change certain register information. So when you are a charity and you're on the, the Scottish Charity Register, you are obliged to uh, uh, give us some information each year which we use to update your your uh, register and it, the system also allows you to change some of that information so for example your main contact or your, your the address and other things go to the next slide Cap. So every year, we ask charities like yours to send us your annual accounts, your trustees annual report, and your external scrutiny report. This has been pretty standard for, uh, for some time, and you'll be delighted to hear that the, although there are a number of changes in the, in the system and how you log into that system, the actual information that we require from you this year is the same as we required from you before. Charities must submit the documents as part of the part of the return, and you must do so within nine months of your accounting year end. I think everybody on this call had an accounting year end. I think was it December last year? Was that right? so? We're, um, so we are. Uh, uh, we're now at the, the end of September, and so this is this is your deadline will be coming up. as well as uh, information about how to use the system. Remember, our website's a great source of information for charities and charity representatives. We, ha we have a lot of supporting 
uh, information there on, uh, on your accounts and how to prepare those, the system of independent examination, what's expected of you and your examiners, and about how to prepare and submit an effective trustee annual report. We've, we've also in the past uh, had uh, events like this to explain all these uh, parts of your uh, all, all these obligations that you have. And so if you go to our website, we'll send you links to each of these parts of our website uh, after this event has finished. And our YouTube channel as well has got recordings of other events that you can go to to get more information. But what happened? So we have a deadline. Uh, we have an obligation to put in. What happens if you are late? Well, the first thing that will happen is that their system will update your charity uh, entry on the, the Scottish Charity Register to mark that uh, to mark it as being late. And this has, I, I suppose, that's a, that's our main, uh, I suppose, uh, 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 that's, the, that's, that's the first uh, and, and main thing. Actually, most charities, if they're marked as late register, will subsequently submit uh, uh, and rectify this situation because the, the consequences are, you know, that we understand that a number of funders use uh, uh, this, the charity register as a means to uh, uh, evaluate charities for funding. We know that members of the public and others use the charity register to um, uh, investigate and understand uh, charities and their work for whether they want to donate time or money. Uh, to particular charities and so ha being seen as a charity who is on who is completing the statutory obligations on time is seen as a positive and not doing so is seen as a negative and if you if your charity is a, is significantly late and has a number of uh, missed deadlines there are there are some regulatory paths that we can take with your charity. That's very much for us a matter of last resort. We'd much rather uh, be an enabling regulator and help charities to meet the deadline. And if they fail, they fail to meet it, to at least do everything that we can to get you over that line. And, uh, and that's the, the that's that is the enabling approach that we would like to take. But we do have, as well as uh, a support network for charities, some uh, regulatory powers to take action against charities. So why have we, why have we changed Oscar Online? Well, the actual system that underpins Oscar Online um, is, well, is over a decade old, which is quite old for a, an IT system. And because of its age and other things, it was uh, not as secure as it could have been, and it was not as flexible as it could have been. So what we've done over the summer, um, after a couple of years worth of work, led by Cameron and others, is to replace the underlying system so the kind of database of the, the CRM uh, for, the, for the digitally minded of you, um, that the place where all the records are held and all the details are held for Oscar staff and others to, to work with and then ex uh, we extract information from that to publish it on the register. A new system means that more users are able to access a charity's record. Up until now you've been able to log into Oscar Online with the charity number and your password and we've, uh, that, we thought that was our an insecure way of sharing passwords is not a, not a very secure way to run it. So what we're going to do is we'll get more people, named people, access to your charity's information that's now been managed by you. We've increased the upload file size for documents. So if you have large documents, it's easier now to give them to us. Uh, it'll make it easier for us to change our system uh, based on some of the feedback you've given. So I know that for that already we've received, some people say, actually, this works well, but this bit doesn't work as well. And so we are working in the background to make the system better, um, something that we were unable to do with the last one. It was uh, it was pretty inflexible. So over time, we want to make improvements to it. Uh, for example, to add in additional uh, functionality to it, so you can 
uh, whenever you log into that account, you can do a range of things as well as just your annual return. Uh, and things. We have also changed the design so it looks a little bit more like our website and it, it has more sort of modern design features. So actually, there's some changes just now, but the, for us, the biggest benefit is that over time, the system can, can adapt and improve in a way that the last system could. So what I want to do now, oh, <laughs> is just tell you a little bit about it and then pass you over to Cameron, who's going to give you a, a run through and let you have a look at the system from a user's perspective. Okay. It looks a little different, hopefully a, a little easier to get around than the last system. Um, it gives, rather than a charity having an account, a single account, is that we give accounts to users associated with each charity. Logging in slightly different, but it should not be a, an unfamiliar process to anyone who um, has logged in to uh, buy shopping or submit a form or do other things. So we've tried to use best practice in that login experience. So it's different from before, but it shouldn't be unfamiliar to you. Uh, and in terms of the moving from charity accounts to individual accounts, each charity can have up to three separate charity users who can log into the system on their behalf. Excellent. It's over to myself now, John. Okay, well, thank, thank you very you much, much, Cameron. If you can take it away, then we'll, uh, we'll be able to take the questions at the end. Brand. Well, thank everybody for joining. Um, I'll apologise just now. My internet at home seems to be playing up. I'm blaming it on the wife working remotely as well today. So we will blame her if things go down the pan a little bit. But I'm sure my colleagues will step in if that happens. So John's briefly covered there some of the points into our new system. And these are the four kind of main points that we're going to cover through our, our quick demo. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a live demo. As I say, my internet is a little bit slow um, today. And doing a call whilst showing the system seems to be a bit slow. But I'm going to run through a series of screenshots so you can see what the new system looks like and some of the new nuances of the new system. So we mentioned that it looks new. So it, it, it does significantly. Those that have used the old Oscar Online system will remember the kind of the blue and grey colours that we used to see with very plain boxes. This new system, so if you have a look here, you can see that the, even the home screen itself is significantly different. I mean, you log in, it asks for your username and password, and on the right hand side, it's got their Oscar News, and that's directly linked from our website with the news items we publish. So you'll see there that the first news item that's, that's shown there on the, the screenshot is actually for this event. So hopefully when you log into Oscar Online over time, you'll see Oscar news that is relevant to you and relevant to the sector. So this new login is slightly different. This is where things are quite significantly different to the old system. You're now logging in with your email address and a password. So it's yourself that's logging in, not necessarily the charity. And you'll understand why in a wee second. Once you've entered your username and password, you then get asked the question of entering your charity number. Now, if you're the contact for one charity, that might feel a bit strange. Why, why would I have to enter the number? I'm only associated to one. Well, that's because you can now be associated to a number of charities. So if you're somebody like an independent examiner or you're involved in multiple charities, you can have access to multiple charities at the same time without having to remember an additional username and password for every single one. All you have to remember is your charity number. I'm hoping that everybody can remember their own charity number. I struggle with the two I'm involved in, but hopefully you guys will be a bit more on the ball than I am. You'll note here as well that we've got a wee note there that just says, you only need to enter the numbers in the box. The SE is already there for you, as you can see. Your charity number only starts with a zero, not the letter O. So just a wee thing to remember there is SC followed by six digits. And I'm sure Casey can attest to the number of calls we get saying, we're trying to log in, it's not letting us, and it's because they're putting an O or they're typing in SC at the start. So just make sure that you're putting in the, the purely the numbers, the numerical value of the charity number. Once you've logged in, again, it looks significantly different. It's no longer that blue and gray look that we used to have on the old system. 
It's a bit more colourful, it's a bit more lively looking, and it's cleaner. You'll see there at the top, you have the Oscar Online logo. If you click that, it takes you straight back to this page, the dashboard. And along the right hand side, you can see dashboard, manage charity users, annual return, and making changes to your charity. So those tabs allow you to navigate through the system on the various parts that you do. And we're hoping that over time, when we decide, when we look to add new forms onto the system, that they'll be visible there as well. So if things like perhaps consents, rather than having to go to our website and finding a paper form, you can now hopefully be eventually be able to do that on there. So that will hopefully come in time as we're working through this new system. You'll see just below in the bottom half of the section of the, of the page, it's listing out your annual returns. Just like it did in the old system, you can see your previous submissions. And you can see there the status of the most recent one, and if there's anything there that you need to look at. So again, it's a bit cleaner, a little bit easier to read, and it's also mobile friendly, so it will adapt better if you're using a mobile device like an iPad or a phone, whereas the old site didn't quite do that as nicely as with the light. The main reason you can go into Oscar Online is to complete your annual return. So it makes sense that one of the areas we worked on was the annual return. You can see here, it's got completing your annual return, and you'll see there that it lists out the sections of the return itself. And you can access that either by using that submit your annual return on the homepage dashboard or on that tab at the top that says annual return. And it'll ask you the questions just like it did before. Those questions haven't changed. They're exactly the same. I apologize if anybody can hear that, but somebody's just decided to start cleaning the windows outside my room. So if you can hear some scratching, that's what it was. I thought it was the cat, but it's not, it's a window cleaner. So as you can see, the annual return does look a little bit different, but the questions are again, the same. You'll notice the, the wee world icon next to some of those questions. And that's the same notification that we provided previously. And that says to you that that information will be made publicly available. So things like your gross income and your expenditure, and your number of trustees and paid staff, we sometimes provide them if we get asked for ROPSI requests, which is people asking for open public uh, information. And those questions are shown on the register entry, like your income and expenditure. The next part of doing your annual return is providing your annual accounts. So again, we've made that a little bit easier to do than the old system, where you had to click through after selecting your option, then attaching the document, waiting for five to 10 minutes for the document to load, and then open up another one, and then another one, and another one. This time it's a lot easier. And as John mentioned, those file size limits are a lot bigger than they used to be. So before it used to be five documents of eight megabytes, which is not that big when you consider the size of some of your annual returns and reports now, particularly after we did a lot of work and, and Laura's fantastic and best viewed video on YouTube um, of ours on the trustees annual report guidance, um, which highlighted the, the importance of including things like pictures. All of a sudden those eight megabyte documents became massive and you had to split them down. Well, now that limit is now 30 megabytes. Um, so hopefully you aren't providing too many images in your annual accounts, but they should fit no problem. And you can still upload up to five documents as well. So here, once you've selected that option of account submission option, you attach the document, you press upload, and you can see there that the document's showing and you have the option to download it. So you can view the document that's been uploaded, or you can delete it and attach another version. And you can still upload more than one document. And again, the declaration information is exactly the same as it was before. You can fill in the information there, ticking the two boxes that are mandatory and putting in your name and the role. And the interesting thing here again is that you still have that save and continue later button. So if you want to go through the annual return, providing most of the questions and go, I need to double check my answer to question 2B, you can hit save and continue and come back to it later on. So those options still exist if you need to do so. And we're hoping that one of the projects we'll be working on next is to look at the annual return questions. So it might be that in a year's time or in two years time, those questions might be slightly different. And if they are, 
you've then got that option to save and continue later and come back if you need to go and find further information. But once you've done and everything's ready, you can press submit. And that button just exists as it did previously. And that will submit your annual return to us. So there's nothing too complicated in the submission of your annual return. Everything is more or less the same. It just looks a little bit different. The next step that I'll we'll cover is the making changes to your charity. Now, there's certain details that you can change of your charity's details on Oscar Online. And that includes things like your principal contact details that are publicly shown on the register, things like your accounting reference date, and a couple of other wee details about your charity. So using that top bar to navigate again, you can click on the Making Changes to Your Charities tab and you get presented with a screen like this. Now, some of those details you can't update. For example, your charity number. Unfortunately, that number has been given to you and that's the number you have. It's not like buying a new registration plate. You can't decide and change it later, no matter how much you pay us. Things like your legal name is something that you need to seek our consent for. So those are the exact example we use the seeking our consent forms, submitting that to us, and it's something that we have the power to change, but not something that you do. The things you can change are there. You can change your accounting reference date. You can change your charity's contact details. You can even add things like your parent charity name, number, and country registration. So if you do have a parent charity and those details weren't updated at the point of application, you can add them in. And just like before, we also have a reason for update box. Once you've made the changes, put some text in that box. It's a handy thing for us to see as we see it in the audit trail. But it might be also things like if you're changing your account and reference date, there may be a reason behind that so you can populate that in there. And then you just press update and it's as simple as that. So now we're getting to the fun stuff. And this is the things that took Oscar staff a wee while to get their heads round. I'm still getting my head around it myself, so bear with me. One of the significant changes to this system is the fact that you can have charity users. So we mentioned that you have one account for for um, one account for yourself as a user, and the next step up to that is that you can access multiple charities. Well, a charity can have more than one user; it can have three. So three potential charity users on the system, and this allows you to have people with multiple access. So for example, I might be the chairperson of the charity and I can have access to it, but actually it makes sense for Laura, because she's my treasurer, to have access to it, because I'm not gonna submit the annual returns. But I want to be kept up to date and I want to be able to have that access, and it provides really good resilience. So Laura has access as well. And then it might be that actually Casey is my independent examiner, and. Laura's unable to do the return because she's off on holiday somewhere. And in case goes, if you give me access, I can log in and do it for you. Fantastic. It makes my life a lot easier. So I can then give Casey access. And this is what this bit looks like. So under the managing charity user section, you can see there we've got a charity user one and a charity user two already in place. And this, in this particular case, I'm charity user two. And I can see the button there to edit the user so I can change my details. So if my email address changes, I can hit edit user and I can put in my new email address or perhaps change my name as well. The other thing we can also do is remove a user. Now you have to have at least one person, one charity user on every charity. But in this case, Casey's left the organization. She, she's decided no longer to be involved in our charity, which is rather disappointing. But I've gone in and I can now click remove user. If I click remove user, it's not just gonna allow me to take her off because we want to make sure that there's some, some source of validation to confirm that that's the case. So what happens is Casey will receive an email. If I press remove user and confirm, Casey receives an email from the system to say, somebody's requested you be removed as the, from this charity. And Casey can go, yep, that's fine, tick. And she'll then come off as a user of this charity. However, it may be an occasion where actually that's not quite the case and Casey can then cancel that and have a word. It might have just been a mistake. The other thing I can do is I can also remove myself. So you've got that remove user button there. Now, fantastically, it asks you to confirm if you've removed yourself. Slight nuance of the system, but 
it does work. And the next part is adding a user. So once we've added someone on, we hit that add user, charity user three, it asks us a question. And that question is quite simply, enter the email address. Because that's the only information at this point that the system needs. What we do is we enter in the email address and we hit add user. And what will happen is if, for example, I add Laura onto this. Now, Laura's not currently on Oscar Online in any other charity. It would send Laura an email to say, you've been invited to become a user of this charity. Here's your temporary password because she's not a user currently. And Laura can then log in, change, um, add her name, change the password if needed. But if Laura was already on the system, perhaps she's a treasurer or a trustee of another charity or maybe an independent examiner for another charity, she can go into that box. And when you, somebody puts her email address in, the email she receives will say, you've been associated with a new charity. Click to approve. And Laura can then click on, and then she says, yep, I'm associated with this charity. Tick. And then she becomes a user. So the system is able to understand if somebody is already a user rather than somebody having multiple accounts and it growing and growing and growing, but it does work off the email address. So if somebody puts in the wrong email, it's not quite going to work. We have had a couple of occasions over the, the since our launch, seven-ish weeks, where somebody's put the email address in and it's been incorrectly entered. Um, so maybe there's been a spelling mistake or they've not entered it properly. If that happens, if you just drop us an email, and our colleagues can then resolve that issue and take that invitation off. Because at, current, at the moment, there's no way of removing an invitation that's already been sent. But if you email Oscar, we are able to sort that for you. And finally, we'll talk about changing charities. So we mentioned that one of the benefits of this new system is that you can change the charity that you're associated with. So if you're associated to multiple charities, you can log in in different times. Now, rather than having to log out and log back in every single time, we thought that's far too much effort and far too much work. So in that top right-hand corner, you'll see a wee green icon. And in this case, it has my initials in it. If you click on the green dot, it comes up with the wee box that you can see there. And it has switch charity or log out. So if you need to log out and you're finished, just press log out, done and dusted. If you want to view another charity that you're associated with, that you have access to, you just press that switch charity and it takes you back to the second screen that we saw, which had the charity number, please enter your charity number box. And you just put in the new number and hit continue and it'll take you into that charity. So if you're somebody that has access to multiple charities, for whatever reason, you're a trustee or multiple, you can check multiple at the same time without having to log out. So hopefully that makes things a lot easier for everybody involved. Uh, what we will do when we finish is that Cameron and I will work to send you an email with the links that I promised you during the introduction and then start work on uh, putting this and other guidance materials onto the website, hopefully by uh, the beginning and middle of next week. Our office, like many, will be closed on Monday for the bank holiday, and so that'll probably be Tuesday or Wednesday. If our website is full of information to help support you and your charity in your role and to help you to um, submit your annual return efficiently and effectively. If you can't, uh, if you're really struggling and you can't to, uh, find what you need on the website to help you, then Casey and our colleagues at the, uh, the front desk will be delighted to be able to answer your calls uh, and to, but, or to take your emails. Email is by far the best way to, to get a hold of us info at oscar.uk but try the website first okay thank you very much everyone uh, enjoy the rest of your friday goodbye